when my servant died, what he did for that sacred dead, for such a thing as I. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I'm but happy all day. Did the crimes that I have done, he groaned upon a tree. Amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Well, might the sun in darkness hide and show his glory in? When Christ mighty maker died of death and then preached his sin. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Thank you, Mom. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while since I've seen this talk. That was fun. That was fun. All right. Y'all gonna put my mom on the spot. God forgive me. <laughs> Thank you, Mama. Thank you so much. All right. So let's get to the sermon, y'all. Well, what did I do with my sermon here? If I can find it, give me a second here. What did I do with it? Y'all go ahead and open up to, um, I think we're in Revelation. Where It said it should be in the handout. What, what, which one are we in? Revelation 21, right? The Revelation 21, is that what I put on it? 21 through 4 through 5, okay. All right. Uh, where was I? I think I had I think I had something in Thessalonians too. Yeah, I got something in Thessalonians. Four thirteen. Well, I'll be dang. I don't need my sermon to preach, but it definitely helps me out. There it is. All right, y'all. Just so you have it. All right. I'll do it. You'll do it. Okay, come on. (laughs) The happily ever after. You and I are created in God's image. God loves us and knows what worries us the most. And yes, we have worries, y'all. God commands us not to worry, tells us not to worry, but yet we still have worries, right? He knew, I know that God, I think think he, he knew that we worry about death and life after death and the death of our loved ones especially. I know I'm not alone about this one. I worry about my loved ones, where they're at, you know, especially the ones that I mean, where, well, let's just be honest with ourselves. That, well, they weren't believers, you know, or, or they were say so believers, you know. That's why I said the funeral I did yesterday was one of the best ones I've ever done. And not, not that that's the first believers funeral I ever did, but it was it was without a doubt. This man is in heaven. This man is with the Lord. That's why that's why y'all it, it's. It's so important that we have this we have we have this salvation, this free gift of God. okay, freely given by Jesus. Because when we die without a shadow of a doubt, that's where we're going. And y'all, it's it's just like that, y'all. It's instantaneous. Don't ever let somebody tell you, oh, you know what? It's there's a waiting time and there's a wait list or there's, you know, you go to sleep. No, that's not true. All the best preachers, all the ones that speak truth, all the studies that I've done, okay, and I'm not someone that's super smart, but I've studied the word, 
And everything in the word says there is no doubt when a believer dies, they are immediately with the Lord. It's instantaneous, like uh, like John MacArthur says. And we get to heaven. He says, I shall he shall wipe away every tear from their eyes and there shall no longer be any death. There shall no longer be any mourning or crying or pain. The first things have passed away. And he who sits at the throne, behold, I am making all things new. And he said, write these for write for these words. Write these words are faithful. And true. Revelation 21, four through five. Let us pray. Hey, Father, you guided me in preparation. I ask you to guide me in presentation. In Jesus' name, amen. God knows what worries us the most. And I think life after death, death worries us. I uh, worry for things I shouldn't worry about because I'm around a lot of, you know, I'm around people getting older. And I hate saying this, but sometimes I worry about getting older, y'all. Nothing y'all did, but, I, you know, I, I want to be able to do all the things I can do, right? You know, I know there's going to be come a time when I can't box anymore. Well, actually, I'm already past it. I'm already too old to box, but I still like boxing, you know. And, it, and I know it sounds kind of petty, but, you know, there are things that I see when we lose our mobility. That's the most hardest thing, for, for, for especially for a man to do lose. This is their mobility. They're able to do things. And I see these things happen. So we worry about these things. And, you know, God says... For he himself knows uh, knows our frame. He is mindful that we are we are but dust. As for a man, his days are like grass. As for a, a flower of the field, so he flourishes. When the wind has passed over it, it is no more. Its place <coughs> is acknowledged no more. Excuse me. But for the loving kindness of the Lord is from the everlasting to the everlasting to on those who fear him. That's a long time, y'all. Think about that. From the everlasting to the everlasting. <laughs> That's forever, ever. And his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember his precepts to do them. That's Psalm 103, verses 14 through 18, by the way. Death has been called the most democratic experience in life. For we all know, we all know, we know why, because we all know we participated, right? We all have to participate in death. But, you know, as a defense mechanism, we think of death only happening to other people sometimes. We don't like to grow old, man. I don't know anybody in here likes to grow old. I know we like the experiences of growing old. Okay, and I don't like using old words because I don't want to get beat up. I don't really get beat up after the sermon, but we like going through life. Let's just say that. I know we like to hold a great grandbaby. We don't like it. We love it. Right. So we like but 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 we don't we don't like the experiences of of things falling apart. Right. <laughs> Not being able to, to get up out of bed as quick as we used to. Maybe I know I'm 41 years old and I, I don't get up. I don't get up out of bed as as quick as I did. Well, actually, when I was 21 years old, I don't think I ever got up out of bed. But <laughs> I know when I did get up out of bed, it was it, it, it was easier. But it only gets harder. But, you know, yet the Bible tells us life is only a vapor that appears for a moment. Then it vanishes or it's like the grass that withers and the flower that fades. Unless the Lord comes back first, we will die physically. According to Scripture, it is appointed unto man once to die then the judgment. Every graveyard and every cemetery can testify to this no matter if you deny it or remain Ignorant of this biblical truth. Ignorance can rob us of certainty, church. OK, I want you all to listen to this. OK, ignorance can rob us of certainty. And I'm going to tell you why. But first, we have confidence and we have the comfort. But we have it available. OK, we have confidence and we have comfort available in God's word and our personal relationship with Jesus Christ. When death knocks on the door, this in turn, you know, when we were. It weakens our when we have ignorance, it weakens our most cherished asset and offering to the world. Hope in the face of death. You know, and that's what we talked about yesterday at the services was 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 was, was, was hope. You know, Christians, we don't we don't we don't sorrow like those who have no hope. We grieve. It's OK to grieve when someone we, we it's, it's actually it's it's expected to grieve when someone dies. 
But we don't grieve, Christians, we don't grieve like those who have no hope. Because the simple truth is that if we know Jesus, we love and we accepted him as our Lord Savior, we have hope. As Christians, we stand secure in the face of death. We have the answer in Jesus who conquered death for us on the cross. He is the hope of this dying world. Satan is neither ignorant nor stupid. He's not. He knows this truth about Jesus. That's why he puts up every obstacle to try to keep us from studying God's word. He would desire us to remain ignorant of God's eternal truth. Likewise, this is why the Bible instructs us on the importance of study and uh, show thyself. I want to read. I'm going to skip down a little bit because I know I've taken up some time and I want to close on time. because I got some stuff that I want to say in here and I want to make sure that I say it. So I'm going to get to Thessalonians. First Thessalonians was actually this is what this is what Michael Bullis. Michael Bullis. This is one of his dying requests is requested that that this would be reread at his service. So I'm going to read it today. It's first Thessalonians four, thirteen 13 through 18. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brethren about those who are asleep so that you will not grieve as to the rest who have no hope for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again even so God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep in Jesus for this we say to you by the word of the Lord that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will not precede those who have fallen asleep for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive remain. will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Beautiful, beautiful. The Thessalonian Christians were grieving over the death of their, their Christian loved ones like we do today. And the uncertainty concerning what happens when you die. What bothered Paul was that the Christians were out of ignorance. They were grieving as the lost have no hope in this world. That's what Paul was upset about. Therefore, Paul lives out what we are commanded to do in the verse. Comfort one another. To comfort means to exhort, to instruct, and to teach. And that is what Paul does for the believers ultimately. <coughs> discerning this important subject. Paul is going to instruct the, with truth to build Christian the Christian hope where the kind con- contrast Satan, Satan uses a believer's ignorance to destroy the Christian hope. He uses it to destroy entire, to destroy the, the, the whole church. They're not even churches anymore. And what I'm talking about is that, that Satan's biggest weapon is taking Christian doctrine, twisting it, and using it against us. OK, there's there, there, there's whole institutions, whole institutions built to teaching this false truth. But the truth about God's word. Is that we do not need to worry about life or death. We don't, but we do. But we have a revelation from God in his word. One preacher says, why substitute human speculation for divine revelation? Why? Paul says in verses 14 and 15 of Thessalonians that if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep in Jesus. The apostle emphasizes verse 15, for this we say to you by the way of the Lord. The second Corinthians states uh, deals with this certainty. It says uh, certainly. Uh, I hope so. I hope I hope so for the Christian. For we know that if we if this earthly tent, which is our house, is torn down, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. The blood of Christ makes us safe. The word of God makes us sure. Are you safe today? Are you sure today? So it's sleep. I want to talk about sleep. We saw y'all, y'all see the word sleep. We see the word sleep in the text, right? And I'm going to tell you a sad story in a second. But let me tell you what sleep means. Sleep always is always. OK, sleep is always for the body 
It's never for the soul, okay? It's never for the soul. And I've, I've heard, I've heard some, some, even, even, even in, in, in the normal realm of, of, I guess, Protestant faith, I've heard some preach that. And that's not true. It is for the body. The body dies. It's never for the soul. It's not the soul that sleeps, okay? One of the most, the, one of the most saddest things that I, 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 I've ever experienced, I guess, with, 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 I guess, I guess just in general, was dealing with a Jehovah's Witness. Uh, so, first of all, I love when Jehovah's Witnesses come to my house. I'll tell a funny story first. Jehovah's Witnesses come to my house. Uh, they, they, they have my house marked. They don't come to my house anymore because they know the Baptist pastor lived there. But <laughs> I, I, I talk to them like a salesman. I'm like, look, I've looked from a sales standpoint. The way I look at things is when you sleep, you kind of just fall in the dirt. You don't know what happens after that. It's kind of dark. There's, you, you don't have an answer for that. And you say, well, maybe you're up here building this and that. Me, as a salesman and as a pastor, I, I like going with this deal over here because it says I'm with the Lord instantaneously. But sadly, Jehovah's Witnesses, they they believe this 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 false idea that their soul is, is sleep. It's just black. There was a Hispanic girl. She loved her grandma more than anything in the world. And they're Jehovah's Witnesses. And, you know, her her home life was horrible. She was you know, molested by her father. So she didn't have a relationship with her mother because the mother knew that was going on, did nothing about it. But when her grandmother died, because they're Jehovah's Witnesses, they really thought that the soul was asleep. And so it was sad to hear this young Hispanic girl speak of um, her grandmother. She just didn't know. And truth be told was that, well, we just don't know because... That's the false religion that they chose. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you where her soul's at, but I'm not certain. The truth is, and it's a simple truth, y'all. If we just follow God's word and a simple truth, we will experience eternal joy. Eternal happiness, eternal security, eternal safety, not just in the afterlife, but now. Okay? And the word of God, and I've told you all this before, is so easy that a child can understand it. <laughs> living proof, right? We have living proof. He's not here right now, but he's somewhere he's back there with the kids. Anakin is living proof, okay? So it's so easy that a child, a six-year-old, seven-year-old child can understand it. You don't even need me. Don't wrong. I still want a job, by the way. <laughs> but you don't need me to tell you that, okay? You don't need a man. You don't need some fancy, some fancy Ivy League college telling you, oh, the ancient Greek and ancient, you know, ancient Hebrew, which is great stuff, okay? But you don't need that. All you need is a heart for Jesus, okay, and a desire to know him and love him. And sometimes we don't even let him in if you haven't done that. Or maybe you want to do that. You can do that today. OK, I'll give you an opportunity to do that here, which is I'm going to close here in just a second. But the soul of a departed believer is with the Lord. OK, that is where you are. So that's why that 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 is why that's why we call it a celebration of life when someone is. Is gone <laughs> because it's just, man, we're going to be there with them soon, you know. And that's. A simple and beautiful truth. Is I will know you. I will know my mama. I will know who she is. She'll know who I am. I will know all of y'all. When we get there. I mean, I'm not looking to get there real soon, but I don't know. I could be there soon. We could we all be there soon before we know it. Like the scripture said, it's just dust in the wind. Like the you know, the secular song, dust in the wind. You all <sighs> But y'all, I want to see everybody there. 
And I know I will. But because of this hope that we have right now, we can endure. And we will endure. And that motivates me, y'all. That motivates me. That motivates me to do things beyond my doing. That things only God, only God can do. So don't get in a rush to be done, because if you're still here right now, if you're sitting in these pews, guess what? It ain't over. (laughs) Ain't that right, Mary? It ain't over. Lucy, it ain't over. (laughs) It ain't over. We got work. We got work to do. And the work is good, y'all. And um, one day we all hear that shout, that sound, right? (laughs) Just like the song, the song goes, here he comes riding in on the clouds. These are the days of Elijah, y'all. These are the days of Elijah. And we're living in it. Don't be scared. Be be secure. Be safe. You are safe, y'all. You're a believer in Jesus, okay? You are safe. We're safe. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the word today. I thank you for everybody that's here. I thank you for all the things that, that you do, Lord. The things that we can't see, the things that we don't know, the things that we do know. We love you, Jesus, in your name. Amen. I dare not end a sermon without offering a lifeline. If you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, please come up right now. If you want to make a recommitment to that, maybe you've maybe you've you've already had a profession of faith. OK, you come on up right now. All right. Don't be afraid. God will give you the courage. Come on up. If you want a special prayer, come on up. If you don't want to come up, raise your hand. We're going to pray over you. We're going to play with you. That's what we do. If you want to talk to me about the, uh, this church, you can talk with me. You can talk with our, our worship leader. Talk with one of us. We'd love to have you. We'd love to answer your questions, too, as well. Please come up. Hey, Melissa, good to have you here. Request on there. I'm lift up everybody that's on there. Lift up uh, uh, Melissa. Lift up Crystal. Lift up everybody on there. Brother Jesse's going to just close us out real quick in a short prayer. Let's try to remember our friends who are ill and try to remember the American needs your prayers. Be with us, Heavenly Father. Thank you, thank you for everything that you've given. Be with us and guide us. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Jesse.